for joining me today. Um, as a reminder for anybody watching at home, public accountability meetings are one of the ways where I hold the Durham Constabulary to account to ensure it continues to deliver efficient and effective services to local residents. The focus of this meeting will be on retail crime, as safe for business is a key theme within my police and crime plan. As we've seen recently through the media and press reports, there is a growing concern about increased reports of shoplifting and antisocial behaviour that impacts on retailers and also staff who are subjected to unacceptable levels of violence, threats and abuse. There's a real concern for all 43 police and crime commissioners covering England and Wales, and the current shoplifting epidemic is placing unprecedented pressure on retailers, many of whom are turning to technology and external security companies to catch and prosecute offenders at considerable expense. To understand these experiences better, I recently conducted a crime survey with businesses across County Durham and Darlington and the feedback I received from this research and through continued engagement with local retail and business organisations highlighted a perceived lack of support and response around this issue. I regularly talk to retail workers. We were out yesterday um, talking to some of the, the staff and the managers and their experience of abuse and violence in the workplace are real and frightening and they have genuine concerns about keeping themselves and businesses safe. According to the survey, many are choosing not to report their experiences to the police, and this is something we clearly need to understand and work harder to address. As Police and Crime Commissioner, I'm working closely with businesses and retail representatives to increase confidence and trust across the sector. The list of public questions I present to the force executive team in today's meeting reflect the concerns of retailers and staff and shared through the that they shared through the survey and through my ongoing discussions with retail representatives. Already, this engagement work has resulted in improvements in the way the force manages and tackles retail crime, including shoplifting. In the autumn, we welcomed the addition of a chief inspector responsible for strategically overseeing retail crime and other developments will be covered in some detail by Chief Inspector Claire Errington and Chief Inspector Jim O'Neill during their presentation. This is the 10th public accountability meeting I have held since being elected in 2021. And I hope that they illustrate the role I play in, in as a commissioner in putting the public's concerns and lived experiences of the people of County Durham and Darlington, as well as victims of crime, who are at the heart of local decision making processes to achieve the quality of services residents expect and deserve. All of these meetings have been recorded and are available on YouTube for public viewing and the link can be found on my officer's website. A full recording of the meeting will be available shortly to enable residents, businesses and shop workers to see exactly how the accountability process works and action being taken to address business crime. As PCC, I have a duty to regularly scrutinise and the performance of the force to ensure it remains responsive to the needs of local residents living across County Durham and Darlington. When necessary, I must also challenge for improvement and identify any areas of weakness where further resources and focus are needed. This is a productive process that ultimately brings positive change for the people of County Durham and Darlington. Before we start, uh, can we have some brief introductions from the force executive team? For this morning's session, I will invite Chief Constable Rachel Bacon to say a few words and then introduce the team. Over to you, Rachel. Good afternoon, Joy, and thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you about retail crime. So, by way of introductions, I'm obviously Rachel Bacon, the new Chief Constable, uh, two months in, and with me here in the room, we've got um, hello, everybody. I'm Assistant Chief Constable Tom Urantinis. And then moving round, we've also got... Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Temporary Assistant Chief Constable Richie Allen. 
um, Head of Command for Governance and Insights, Sheena Irwin. And then we've also got Claire with us, who you've already introduced, who's going to be talking. And online, I think we've got from the executive, Gary. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Gary Ridley, Assistant Chief Officer for the Force. Thank you, Gary. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk about Durham Constantinople's response to retail crime. And shortly we'll hear from Claire about some of the tools, tactics, successes and challenges that we have in this area. And I'd like to thank Claire for all the hard work she does in really improving our response to retail crime. You're quite right, it has absolutely become a focus of national media attention recently and giving a combined voice to the retailers and shop workers across the country and highlighting their concerns. And I'm very grateful for you in terms of the local survey and that our local understanding of how people are, are actually experiencing this. It's really important to me that people who work in retail do not feel like a forgotten community. They are absolutely part of our community here in Durham and we want to protect them. It's also equally important for me that people who commit crime against businesses in County Durham and Darlington absolutely understand that there will be consequences to their actions. These crimes impact on people's livelihoods and cause people to feel unsafe at work. And we will pursue all reasonable lines of investigation to bring offenders to justice. Durham Constabulary has a detailed retail crime action plan, something we very much deliver in partnership with the retailers themselves. And we know that policing should be done with our communities and not to our communities. And that's why it's so important to hear what we think. So if you're happy, Joy, I'll hand over to Claire now, who will talk us through the presentation and tell you how we're working to drive down shoplifting before we take the questions. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Just just before we, we start off, I just wanted to say from the, the public who are watching this, um, we will have the presentation um, which will last no more than, than 90 minutes um, before I go on to ask the public's questions. So, so really, Claire and, and Jim, it's over to you. Ask for the presentation before on the screen, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Claire Rington. I'm Chief Inspector in the Local Police Command. I'm the force lead on retail crime. Next slide. So, retail crime is defined here as any criminal act intended or unintended against the retail industry. So, against a store, a company, their properties, as well as their employees, customers. For the purpose of this analysis, the following crime categories have been included. Shoplifting, commercial burglary, commercial robbery, making off without payment and theft by employee. Next slide, please. So following the National Police Chiefs Council Action Plan, which was published in October 2023, I've been looking at how Durham Constabulary deals with retail crime. It was evident that shoplifting is the, the highest crime type within retail crime. Between January and December last year, Durham Constabulary reported 17,922 theft and killing offences. Of these offences, 6,803 shoplifting offences. This equates to 38%, compared with commercial burglary, 5%, and making up without payment, 4%. Theft by employee and commercial robbery were so low they don't even equate to a percent. Next slide, please. This table shows the number of shoplifting offences recorded, and it's the blue line at the top, month by month in County Durham and Darling, 2023. The purple line below shows the number of offences with a positive outcome, so prosecution portion, etc. There was a steady incline throughout the first half of 2023, peaking in the summer months. There was a marked decline in October, which is in line with the initial introduction of our activities from our retail crime problem profiles. Must be noted that the detection rates figures are often not reflected until the months following due to the investigation status. Next slide, please. So there's three stages of the shoplifting journey. Next slide. So the first stage is when the retailer contacts the police. So this can be done by a 999, 101, or online. The control room will carry out a thrive, which is an operational risk assessment of the information reported. So, for example, was violence used? Is the suspect still on scene? 
there is an expectation that the retailer will prepare evidence and make it available to help support the investigation. So I CCTV available, can we obtain a statement? The second stage is the crimes recorded and the most and the initial investigation is commenced, whereby we identify the most appropriate investigator. Thirdly, historically, allocation of the investigating officer was uncoordinated, which would result in several officers dealing with one suspect for numerous offences offences. Our pro approach is to streamline this process and identify an officer to coordinate and process all reasonable lines of inquiry. The offender will then be processed by the most suitable means, for example, the criminal justice system or out of court disposal. Next slide, please. So this slide here shows our retail SPOC network. When I mentioned SPOC, it's a single point of contact. So as a force, we've introduced a network of retail crime SPOCs. There is a neighbourhood PCSO dedicated for each area within the force, with a sergeant who oversees and coordinates the SPOCs to look at any issues or concerns and looks at the best practice to distribute across the force. Retail SPOCs have regular contact with retailers and partner agencies and help in the training of systems such as Centrisys. SPOCs will also support and facilitate local shop watch initiatives, disseminate good news, identify crime trends for each area, arrange a crime prevention surveys, and most importantly, feedback on good work, working practices. Next slide, please. We want to work together with retailers to encourage retailers to engage with local retail crime forums, so for example, Shopwatch, provide tactical updates, crime prevention advice, and share information. Crime prevention officers are visiting our most vulnerable stores to provide bespoke advice and help prevent loss. So for example, target hardening. When I mean target hardening, what we can do is look at where CCTV is situated in the stores, um, where its stock is put in the store, so are they put in a um, special office next to the doorway, property marketing and monitoring, staff awareness and restricting access and given banning orders. We aim to include retailers as not only members of the community within which the stores are located, but also as a retail community or neighbourhood, not based on geography, but based on their shared challenges and interests. Next slide, please. So we've done a case study with um, on Sainsbury's local at Chester Street because we identified the top five stores within County Durham and Darling for shoplifting offences. Um, and this was identified through scanning and analysis. Sainsbury's at Chester Street came out as number one across the force. Sergeant Steve Brown, the neighbourhood sergeant from Chester Street, took ownership of this store and a problem profile was created and engagement made with, the Sains with Sainsbury's to identify issues and blockages to contribute to the high crime trend. So firstly, Sergeant Brown identified their personal retail, retail crime spot. Um, and then he looked at how they captured their digital evidence. So from this, the store signed up to Centrisys. I know this can be quite daunting for retailers, but what we did was put in additional training with a PCSO called Michael Ashurst, who was pivotal in training not only the retailers, but also the PCSOs on how to use Centrisys. So from this case study, we identified crime trends. A crime prevention survey was conducted on Sainsbury's where we looked at the security side and where store was located in the store. High visible patrols around the store were implemented. An officer was identified as an OIC to collate all the outstanding inquiries related to offences against Sainsbury's. And from this work, prolific offenders were identified and a number of arrests were made. Between April and October, as you can see, on average, there was recorded 27 shoplifters at, shoplifters at this store. After the implementation of this problem profile, this fell to five per month. So in November and December, there was five reports of shoplifting, but it needs to be noted that these weren't carried out by prolific repeat offenders. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. So that is our presentation for you today. Thanks for that. Um, re really, really helpful um, to go through that presentation. I'm sure it's something that 
we'll use um, numerous times when we visit stores, we will be taking this link with us um, so we can educate all of our managers because I know there is sometimes a, a turnover of managers move around stores, but this is really good education um, that we can share with our, our, our managers and our um, teams um, when we go around. Um, so, so now it takes me over to um, the questions from the public and I really appreciate everyone um, that has responded and provide this information. I'm sure given the questions we've had, there's a lot of similar themes and what we've tried to do is group it all together so you get a, a particular theme. Um, I understand um, that Richie, I think you're going to answer these questions, but please feel free if anybody wants to come in and add anything um, as we go on through them, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, so how can um, the shop and, and retailers and store managers be confident that the reports of a prolific shoplifting is prioritised and tackled um, in a timely manner? Thank you uh, for, the, for the question, Commissioner. And just reiterating your points about the, the public feedback and, and obviously as, as referenced by the, the Chief Constable, you know, we accept that there is a need for policing nationally and, and the force being no different to that, to, to put a refocus on that. And obviously Claire's presentation and, and as I go through the answers will hopefully, um, you know, support and, and give confidence to people that that's um, absolutely what we're doing. So Claire referenced some of this in, in her presentation in terms of prolific local locations and um, offenders. We identify them both at the whole force level and of course importantly at a uh, locality level because we often know where that's where these offenses are, are particularly felt. So at a strategic level, um, myself and, and Tonya, the other assistant chief constable, one of us chair what's called the operational policing performance meeting. And within that, shoplifting plays uh, a, a prominent role. So in that meeting, we'll identify the top 10 um, areas of most criminogenic behaviour, be it through the store itself or an individual offender. Of those top 10, they must have a problem profile, which is managed through our local um, neighbourhood teams with an identified lead. So then getting into a bit more detail around the um, locality side of that, just to make sure it becomes part of daily business within our daily leadership meetings, which take place across the, the four main areas of the force and um, prolific um, offenders are prioritised through that and taskings will take place around any repeat offendings. Um, as Claire also mentioned, we now give individual ownership to officers to go out and make all the inquiries in relation to the ongoing um, activity and effectively it's just getting back to some good old traditional police work, get all those reasonable lines of inquiry done identify the offender and get them arrested for the um, offences. So I think we're starting to see the, the benefits of that, both from that um, graphic that we saw in the main presentation, where we do start to see the um, offences um, coming down. And in the example that Claire gave around the Sainsbury's and Chesley Street, where that targeted action is seeing um, those reductions. It's, it's not lost on me, Commissioner, about the confidence in reporting. So please, we do absolutely encourage that um, reporting if people have, have lost confidence. Thank you. Thanks, Richie. And I think what we've seen nationally is that joining up as well. And I think when you when we do engage locally, you've got your your local shoplifters and you've got your serious and organised crime where they're doing the region, if, if not, and it's really significant amounts of um, thefts that they're involved with um, within their within that area. But also there is, you know, the shops report to me, there is people who cost of living crisis, people are stealing nappies, you know, just small level things as well. And I think that the shops understand that. And I think it's under getting that work out there of what's happening. And I'm sure, um, Rachel, through the single online home, when this comes um, about, I think that will really help our retailers, because I know some of the some of the challenges of them ringing and reporting is the time it takes. Um, so I think that'll be another confidence. So if anybody's watching this later um, in the year, hopefully that's another issue that we'll be able to, we're putting in action to make a difference and to make it easier, more flexible and more convenient to report and also upload um, in, information as well. 
Um, so the next question is uh, something I often get asked about um, during my engagement events is can retailers be provided with a gallery of known offenders in their local area who are likely to shoplift? And I think that takes me back to that question that they might be in Newton Aycliffe, but then they might go to Bishop Auckland, they might go to Ferry Hill. And I think it's how we get that information and that intelligence out to our, our shops and the shop watchers that we've got. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the very short answer is yes, um, we, we need to sign people up to identified and accredited um, schemes because there is a need for information and sharing um, arrangements to be to allow us to um, share these these galleries. Um, so if I may just sort of focus on the two primary um, schemes that we have ongoing in the in the force. So our largest stores tend to use an organization called the National Business Crime Solutions um, and details there do get um, circulated both force and regional um, wide. That group work in partnership with the National Police Chiefs Council, like I say, on a, on a um, national level. We do have um, an officer sitting on that um, meeting and effectively following that, we do produce a force-wide bulletin to be shared with those um, stores. Just a, a bit of a, a local example, um, following the use of that forum, we've actually had a case um, towards the end of last year where that information sharing within the force led to identification of a perpetrator who was subsequently arrested and charged with 38 offences relating to, to retail crime. So yes, absolutely, it, it shows the, the benefit. The other scheme um, that's important to talk about here is Shopwatch. It, it is open to all, so maybe those smaller stores might feel that it's, um, it's more accessible. Um, in Claire's presentation, she referenced the retail spots who are our PCSOs within our neighbourhood policing teams. It's exactly the same principle, perhaps more on a, on a localised level, but it's all about sharing those, those pictures of prolific offenders. Shopwatch is really good as well because it allows communication between stores, the police and um, our CCTV control rooms with um, Apex radios, so effectively walkie-talkie um, radios to help identify um, offenders. Again, just a nice good local example of that is um, PCSO using their um, work phone had a photo board um, on it and he was just in one of the stores doing his Spock activity, um, showed the store some of our um, offenders and actually they knew the individual and identified them to police and this um, resulted in a, in a prosecution. Um, so it, it's, it's really good those two schemes and, and again, you know, it's it's credit to the the broader focus that we're all all putting on this Claire and the team um, since the introduction of the National Police Chiefs Council Action Plan, which came in in October 2023. We've now got um, 80 new stores signed up to um, Shopwatch Plus. Thanks, Richie. I think that's really really helpful and it's really positive to get that that update and quite a detailed update, really appreciate that. Um, so you've also been talking about um, hotspot and problem profiles in, in the presentation. Um, so if, if a store is in a hotspot area, what sort of targeted response do you provide to hot shop, um, hotspot policing areas and repeat locations? So, uh, as, as mentioned, obviously, we, we do identification through the operational policing priorities meeting where either myself or um, Tanya, when, when we chair it, we'll really put a performance focus on those top 10 stores um, and, and ensure that those problem profiles are being managed um, as, as we would want them to be. Um, I also mentioned about the, um, the leadership meetings where there's um, that ongoing everyday tasking around big political offenders, things such as that. But in addition, within the um, 
localities, the chief inspector for those areas, um, once a week specifically look into um, prolific funding for shoplifting, repeat locations and any um, trends. So again, just a, a, a really lifetime example of, of that is yesterday morning in Chesley Street, and it's one of Claire's examples actually, um, they'd had a, a bit of a spike over the weekend in relation to one of the retail premises there um, in the avenues. Um, and the, the focus through that meeting has led to the identity of um, a suspect and they were actually going in with their um, face covered. So it just showed that we need to get that partnership working to understand who the individual was. They were arrested late last night and they're currently in custody um, being, being processed. So it, it's just part of those ongoing um, conversations and that performance management of the force to ensure that we really target both at an operational level through myself and um, Tonya and also down to the locality level through the chief inspectors and the teams really having a focus on this and, and very specifically around our repeat locations and our repeat offenders. Thanks Richie. Um, the next one is, it's a real concern for me about the violence, um, threats and abuse that our shop workers experience. And, and I've, I've brought about this in the past where if you've been a victim of crime, you tend to avoid the place where you've become a victim and you've had an assault with shop workers when they're relying on it for, for the, you know, the mortgage and the, the rent. And um, they kind of just avoid actually going back into the place where that, that's actually occurred. And um, so what support is available for retail staff who are subjected to abuse and violence in the workplace? No, thank you. And, and I think your point does, does really resonate about the fact that kind of, it, you know, they can feel like there's 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 no hiding place around that. So if if a retailer, retail worker, sorry, is identified as a as a victim of, of crime for absolute reassurance, they're given the same support that's offered to all victims of crime through the victims code. So in terms of what does that mean? It means that we'll make an assessment of their needs to see what support might be um, required to give them, whether they're a, a vulnerable victim, um, and, and that can be for a variety of reasons. Um, we'll agree how um, often we'll contact them to give them updates about um, the uh, and we'll give them an opportunity to provide the, the victim personal statement. So it's probably important to separate the fact that we'd be looking at this if somebody is subjected to um, violence who works in a shop, we would we would effectively separate the shoplifting and them as being an individual victim of crime in their own right. Um, so again, just really important to, to make that point. And, and we would wholly echo your sentiment about encouraging reporting about this. You know, I, I completely agree. It is totally unacceptable for anybody to be um, assaulted in the in the course of, of simply doing their job. In terms of just probably pertinent as well just to briefly talk about a, a support measure that we can use as well um, around criminal behaviour orders. So basically where we might have a criminal act so such as shoplifting but that act is also supplemented by either violence or antisocial behaviour when the offending is taking place we can apply for uh, criminal behaviour orders. The work that Claire's been doing with the uh, retail um, crime spots is just to really increase and improve the knowledge about that. So basically that means that we can apply to the court and it's a court granted behaviour order, um, which means that we can put almost an additional conditional behaviour um, on our um, offenders who might be committing antisocial behaviour or violence when they're um, shoplifting. And, and again, you know, we, we're, we're really keen to continue to use this power to grow the use of the power. Um, last year, in relation to one of our Tesco stores within the um, county, we had somebody who went in and, and breached their criminal behaviour order and they received a custodial sentence. Uh, and I think I've heard that um, really positive experiences where that's been, that power's been used, um, Richie. Um, so I think it's obviously rolling that out. I think, again, that gives confidence of what else can be done and to address some of this um, behaviour and, and the shoplifting that's occurring. 
Um, on the next question, I think it's something both myself and the Chief Constable are real advocates of, and that's crime prevention. Um, what prevention advice can be given to retail staff to ensure themselves and the businesses remain safe? Yeah, so obviously, as, as reference, we spoke about um, all of the, the localities having retail um, crime spots. So we now um, have them at the single point of, of contact for stores just to obtain um, some of that advice. They'll go and make proactive visit to stores so that they can um, share that. Um, it, it, it's a it's a bit of a smorgasbord, if you like, in terms of activity here. Some a, a dead simple example is um, in in one town uh, we had somebody using a self checkout. They would buy some items actually, but then put some other items in um, their bag and then leave the shop. The staff now, just from a bit of conversation, they'll actually turn the self checkout stores. Um, off when that person comes in, so they're, they're forced to go through the, the retail counter. Um, other things that we'll do, we'll um, encourage our retailers to engage with the retail crime forums, so that's really your shop watch groups, um, they, they often gather under, under that name, and we'll give them crime prevention advice, um, and that can be things like, you know, target hardening, so what does that mean? That means things like making it harder to um, steal from those stores. So we get a lot of stores now removing expensive alcohol bottom, bottles from the front of the shop, but they might keep the packaging there. So it still enables them to, to do their, their marketing requirements around it. Um, we've increased access control in some shops, just briefing staff um, around awareness. And of course, I've given the example um, just recently about the criminal behaviour um, orders. So I, I make no apologies for saying that again. Um, it's it's another shout really for um, retailers. If they're not part of Shopwatch or another retail forum, please become part of one because we really want to engage. We'll do our proactive bit as well to go out there in our in our communities with our neighbourhood teams. Um, but the, the shop watch is an, is an excellent tool to get some of that um, advice. To totally agree. And, and when I see them um, working together collaboratively, they share and good practice between them as well, as well as we can share national and regional advice. I think sometimes we can learn from the retailers as well about actions that they've taken. I know you know the um we've got the the chair of the federation of small businesses um and there's certain things that are not stored on the store anymore it might be an empty box and you have to get it back from the store just to you know when there's at a smaller level um who don't have the the security advisors and you know linked to a larger store i think that message is really important that we get that out to to the business as well encourage them to to be part of that scheme and i think that's the bit where we, we really use in this um, task force to, to drive that message out and to get more people signed up. And I think hopefully this message that we're sending out today from this accountability meet will get it out and hopefully get more people signed signed up. Um, I was out yesterday and, and I was talking to one of the um, store managers who told me that, remember when um, there was a, a shoplifter in store, um, one of the members of the public actually stepped in to try and apprehend the shoplifter, um, where um, the shoplifter then rang the police um, reporting an assault. Um, however, the shoplifter was nowhere to be seen um, when the police arrived on, on, this, on, on the scene um, after the call. Um, and, and I know this is something that larger stores um, looking at the advice that you would give, what reasonable force can retail workers use to apprehend shoplifters? Um, I, you know, I know the advice that some of the larger stores is you don't, you know, you don't intervene. That's that's part of the message. But there is that people will look to us to say what reasonable force um, can retail workers use to apprehend shoplifters? No, thank you. And, and I'll, I'll try and explain it. It's, it's not always an easy one to get into because there's such a myriad of circumstances that, that you would want to cover. Your, your language about reasonable is, is, is important in, in this. So th there is legislation that covers um, members of, of the public to do this. 
I'm really keen and conscious not to make this um, a, a law lesson and, and try and turn this into a, a bit more practical advice. But it is important to point out that um, it, it is covered um, when a, a member of the public might intervene. Um, it's covered off by legislation. What we would say in sort of more general terms is that any force absolutely has to be reasonable and proportionate to the threat made by the person that they're um, using it on. So if you have somebody acting very passively and, you know, might have um, stolen something and been challenged and been told to wait and they're doing it, then clearly, um, you know, in, in reality, there, there could be no use of force because the person isn't making any sort of threat or, or, or anything such as that. Um, we would normally say, and again, this is supported through the legislation, really you can only legally detain when an offence is made out, um, when it's uh, it's done so by um, a, a member of the public. I think the, the big overarching thing for me though on this practically is please people just do not put yourself at um, personal safety risk. Um, phone the police. Um, if we have, for example, violence being offered to um, a shop worker, it is absolutely threat um, as, as an immediate response. I would stress as well that um, people can't pre-arm, so they can't have you know, uh, it, maybe uh, say a, a weapon underneath a counter or, or anything such as that. My, my advice would be is that if people are stepping in, their use of force has to be reasonable and proportionate to the, the threat that the person that they're stepping in um, is, is giving to them. But really, if in any doubt, please just phone us. Thanks for that. And I think that's very clear, very clear advice um, from um, from yourself, um, Richie, and we'll, we'll always make sure we cascade that as well. I think in particular on the smaller ones, we've seen um, the larger stores have got good CCTV and the, some of them have got body worn CCTV. So even, you know, if the shop leaves, leaves the store, you've got the evidence. And that's something that through our, our work with the, the Federation of Small Businesses, we encourage them to upgrade the CCTV, it's a lot cheaper than it used to be. Um, and some of the evidence that I've seen um, is a very clear, you know, it's pretty uh, fuzzy pictures. And I think that part of it is if the shoplifter does leave the store and they're not apprehended, that information, that intelligence will ensure that the investigations continue and we can get that 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 done as well. So thank you. Um, are all reported, now the next question um, is, are all reported shoplifting incidents um, recorded as crimes in on Durham Constabulary system systems. Yeah, a, a really straightforward answer to this one, um, and the answer is yes. So shoplifting is a crime recordable offence in line with what we call national um, crime recording standards. But yes, this, the very simple answer is yes. All incidents are recorded as crimes. Thank you. And I think this links me back to the, the previous question about um, what assurances can you give that early evidential CCTV is being captured to progress investigations to secure prosecutions? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, from a from a policing perspective, we understand that CCTV is an excellent tool to support um, prosecutions and, and we know the importance of, of early capture to help us swiftly identify and deal with um, with offenders. A couple of practical issues for us to, to get around. Um, there are a, a multitude of CCTV systems out there and, and software operated by retail retailers. So we do sometimes um, find some more challenging to, to obtain footage from. That said, um, particularly our neighbourhood staff and our frontline response teams within our local policing command, who are really the ones going to be going out obtaining this CCTV. CCTV, um, their, their experience with dealing with um, this, this myriad of um, CCTV systems that are out there and they can normally um, fairly straightforward get um, things onto either one of the USB drives or, a, or another hard, hard drive. We do occasionally come up against ones that stump us a little bit and if that's the case we'll just get more technical skills in from the force 
um, to get a, a forensic subject matter expert to um, come and seize the the evidence if if required. Um, so the so the point being, we we understand the importance. We do um, try and get it as as quickly as possible. The odd system, like I say, we we have to get more force um, subject matter experts in, but we, but we get there. We tend to try and encourage retailers to use Sentrysys. Um, it's an it's an interface that Claire referenced in a in a presentation, and that allows retailers to upload CCTV securely and remotely. So actually, they can do it without um, a, a police officer uh, attending. Um, again, if people are struggling with that, if they have the service system, they will of course come out and, and show them how we do it and, and give them a hand. Um, we try and raise the awareness of services through the um, PCSO Spox with retailers. And from a force point of view, conscious that not everybody will will have access to services or perhaps even want it. Um, we are looking at some early discussions with other providers just to try and give us other um, solutions to just directly transfer CCTV. Thank you. And I think that in relation to CCTV, as, as again, that looks at the very large and the very small. Um, but I think that opportunity, those people who are using sentences, they, they seem to have got the around the, the uploading of the CCTV. And as I mentioned at the start of this conversation, the, the single online home might also give that opportunity of, of uploading the, the CCTV in the future, um, but also the help in hand. But it has saved a lot of officer time, hasn't it, where people do all this information um, to hand. So the more we get the message out about the centre assist and, and those packages, I think that will help both of us, um, both organisations and the, the retailers do the best job um, to um, prevent and reduce crime. Um, again, another one on the um, CCTV um, is what's the force response between the link between organised crime groups and particularly um, identification through facial recognition when intelligence of retail crime offenders is captured by other police forces? Yeah, so I suppose maybe initially just to point out that um, our mapped organised crime groups within the, the force area, none are specifically linked to retail crime, but as you, as you gave in your introduction, we do know that regionally we'll have, well, and nationally, in fact, that we'll have um, criminals who will come into to our area. So we're, we're fully aware of, of the impact um, of that. So more broadly speaking, there is intelligence between um, regional force Forces and nationally, just where there's travelling prolific teams, and we think that they they might come into our force area. And and your point about facial recognition is is really valid, and and it's used um, by the force where we um, already use it for um, shop theft investigations, where we have um, CCTV images, but we don't actually at that point know who the suspect is. So we use a system called the Police National Database to um, try and identify offenders in that regard. A uh, really good um, example of that um, last year involving an organised crime group from Birmingham who travelled up through the, the country targeting um, Tesco stores and they were um, doing high value mobile phone thefts. Um, they engaged in um, shoplifting activity within the force area before moving down to North Yorkshire um, and, and because of the use of that fish recognition we were able to tie them to multiple offences across um, several force areas which obviously then helps just show the you know how prolific their, their offending is so really good use of um, of, of it um, more more broadly um, the force is also linked into national work on proactive use of, of facial recognition so whilst on that second regard more, more in its infancy with regards to where we've got CCTV, um, we'll absolutely use facial recognition to um, identify offenders. Thanks, Richie. And obviously, we were talking to the chief early this morning, and we've both had separate conversations with the police and minister. 
Um, and just to reiterate that what you've just said there, he'd also looked at um, who was using that national database to um, identify offenders. And Durham was up there amongst the, you know, the, the people who, the, the, the forces that were using it to, um, the way it was meant to be. And I know that's something that he's also very, very keen to use. So it was very pleasing um, that at national level that obviously that there's an oversight there as well um, on our force and also the recognition that Durham is using the, 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 the tools that it has to um, identify, particularly the serious and organised crime and offenders that are um, targeting our, our shops as well. Um, which brings me on to something that um, in our, my first, our first task force, this was something that was um, shared um, really positively, um, a, a good case study in, in Durham City where the PCSOs recently, um, with the support of the, the neighbourhood teams and the parish and the bid, um, rolled out um, the shop watch. And I think I think it's, um, as an example, I think it reduced it by 60%. So that's like partnership work, the tools, which is the, the, the radios, getting the message out, get the prevention, the eyes and ears across the, um, the, the retail sector, the working together as, as, a, as a team. And they were really pleased with the, the support, obviously, that they were getting, but also that intelligence-led approach. Um, and I think with the addition of the CCTV, hopefully that's coming in the near future, that'll um, bring that on. And I know similar things has happened in Darlington, and um, where again, that shop watch has had a, a, a review and a renew, and, and is having results. So the question is, um, is there a plan to roll out shop watch across the force area? Uh, so again, in, in short, yes, um, you know, it, it's been really good opportunity actually just to, to talk through the, the benefits of it quite a few times in in this um, this, this focus on, on retail crime. Um, so from our perspective, we would we would say it is force wide. Um, the um, reinvigoration that um, we've spoken about, Claire spoke about in, in our presentation since last year, using the, the Spox to, to really um, push it. We tend to find that um, Shopwatch probably works best when it's quite um, bespoken and, and localised. And so whilst overall, it's obviously sharing the same principles around information sharing, you know, using the radios, as I as I mentioned, we do tend to find that um, having it at a more local level benefits because one locality can often differ, differ from another in terms of, of its needs. So we, we do encourage each area to sort of find its natural boundaries and form its own um, shop watch scheme to support the businesses in, in that area. Um, like I said, the, the push really driven through the, the SPOCs were very keen and, and, and we, we spoke about this early on that it becomes really driven and, and owned by um, the, the retailers. We absolutely see ourselves as a critical stakeholder, but again, probably giving it a bit of a neighbourhood watch similarity, we tend to find that those schemes run really well when the stakeholder is the police and we're an active participant, but the schemes are often run better by the people in, in the communities. And I think the point was made um, earlier about us then not assuming what's best for the industry. We become a stakeholder, we listen, we engage, we help and support. Um, so absolutely, it's it's a it's a push, and um, we're going to do a, a bit of extra um, muscle behind it in Business Crime Week in March of, of this year. So, whilst obviously, as I've said there, we are pushing it regularly through the Sparks. We're probably going to do a bit more to to really try and get a focus on the independent stores as well, just to to show them the benefits of, of Shop Watch through that Business Crime Week. Uh, thank you. And I think that is, you, you mentioned there is that success we've seen with um, like the, the farm watch and rural watch within the area, how they're banding together and, and really making a massive difference that, you know, to reduce crime um, and reduce the fear of crime as well. And I think that's a real, I like the independence and the local solutions to local problems. I think that approach with the support of, of your officers um, really supportive. And, and as me, as a, a police and crime commissioner, you know, the, the watcher schemes, as you say, the eyes and ears in our communities, if I can support them and support your teams, that's something that I will um, wholeheartedly do. And we've seen the success. It's actually delivering results, which is important. 
um, and rolling that out in a, a very, very um, localised level. And the idea of taking the small businesses as well, I'm sure with the members that we've got on that task group with the Federation of Small Businesses, they'll be a key part of getting that message out and encouraging more people um, to get involved. Um, so brings me on to the last question. Um, what assurances can the force provide around the constant training of control room operators when shoplifting is reported? Yes, yeah, so in, in terms of call handler training, um, it, initially it includes a, a two week victim support and crime identification course, which literally is, is it says on the tin, if you like. Um, so that covers understanding the definitions of, of different types of crime, which of course um, shoplifting would, would form part of that, and the investigation and considerations around each specific offence type. So they would be able to give bespoke. Um, um, support and um, advice to people when they when they call in. Um, further to that, um, there's another um, two week course which for our um, control room systems training, which um, any new staff gets, and that basically covers how to accurately record and um, um, crime grade the reports that we deal with. Thank you. I think that's that's re really helpful. Um, because I think that's the first part of call, isn't it? That's what everything else is based on. I think given that confidence, um, and as we've seen, again, we've talked to the chief about we understand where we've invested in, in the control room, invested in the staff and appreciate the, the work that we've got and where we can take demand away. You know, that's a really important and like innovation that can really help everybody um, out there. Um, Rachel, before I bring it to an end, is there anything you want to add before I bring the meeting to a close? Thank you, Joy. I just really wanted to reiterate that I know that we haven't always been as easy to contact as we would like. We've significantly reduced our call handling times and we thank you for your investment that you've supported us with in the control room. Please do contact us. Please let us know. Um, we are genuinely interested in protecting you and supporting you and working with you. So please don't judge us on the past judge us on now and where we're going for the future absolutely want to crack this and I know with Claire's work in the force through the neighbourhood policing teams that we will keep seeing these reductions so I want to say thank you for the work, hard work that's been done and also to the public we are here for you please make contact with us when you need to. Thanks Rachel and um, so that really brings me uh, to the end of the accountability meeting I think we've all agreed that there's been a real good presentation and really thorough and detailed answer so I appreciate um, your team Rachel given the time today and to really answer the public's questions which is what it's all about um, I hope everyone who is watching the presentation found them useful um, and with the ongoing evolution of retail offending it's been recognised, as, as Richie said, a very robust approach between policing and retailers is absolutely vital for um, prevention. And so before Christmas, as I mentioned, um, we launched a safer business task group with local retailers, uh, Police National Federation of Independent Retailers, Association of Convenience Stores, National Business Crime Solutions and the Local Authority and Business Improvement District, as well as other partners who have also gone interested in the um, business crime and how in particular the focus is on how we work together to deter shoplift and retail crime and also the violence, threats and abuse against our uh, shop workers. This group will help us understand the crimes faced by the businesses and ensure that they receive the support and the resources they need to keep themselves safe and their customers safe. Importantly, it also recognises the need for multi-agency solutions instead of placing all that responsibility for retail crime at the foot of the force. Um, the first meeting, as I mentioned, was held in the 5th of December. Lots of enthusiasm around the table for progressing retail crime agenda. And um, as Rachel said, intelligence is vitally important. If we don't know about it, if it hasn't been reported, it's a missing part of the jigsaw. So really use that that encouragement to report. We're there for you. Um, that message that um, the chiefs just said, get that, get out there, share that with with people and get the information in. Um, also, additionally, the British Retail Consortium is offering support to local areas um, to host roundtables to discuss retail crime. 
and my office um, has reached out to the BRC to take up this offer with the intention of using this newly created forum to support the Safer Business Group to develop a partnership and action plan to tackle business crime. And I think there's a lot we can learn um, locally, um, regionally and nationally to really um, ramp up this, this work and to share that knowledge of what works and where we put the investment in. We know addition, addiction is also a real key driver between uh, shoplifting and offending. And we know that the sentences for offenders do not currently provide a sufficient deterrent to prevent reoffending. And um, so as well as the Safer Business Group, I also chair the local Combating Drugs and Alcohol Partnership and the local Criminal Justice Board. And there is a clear overlap between the issues and experiences of retailers cutting across both these areas and, and for this reason any solutions to shoplifting and retail crime will not be looked at in isolation. So as Commissioner I will continue to champion the interests of residents and businesses alike asking difficult and necessary questions and highlighting the achievements of the force and its dedicated officers and staff. I will also continue to identify areas in which to pursue innovation to further put County Durham and Darlington on the map amongst its colleagues nationally. Um, if, so if anybody's watching this and want to be involved and want to know more information, please do get in touch with our officers. We would love to hear from you. As Rachel said, we're there to serve. Um, on a final note, I would like to thank the Chief Constable Rachel Bacon and her team um, for their participation and contribution in today's meeting. Thank you, everyone.